Hi guys, it's Pete back again with another review. Uh, today I'm coming to the review, which is not something that I said I was going to do. I, I said I was going to do the Iron Man review, uh, the MCU films, and I am still going to do that, but uh, the review I'm bringing to you today is a quick look back at, uh, with Rise of Planet of the Apes, which was the first one of the rebooted trilogy of this new Apes trilogy, with War of Planet of the Apes coming out. Uh, it's been out a couple of weeks, I'm going to go see it hopefully next week or sometime this week. But I just thought it's a good time, as this trilogy is coming to a close, to have a quick look back at the original one that um, that started it all off and, and have a, you know, see how it's uh, stood up. Because films do, uh, in my opinion, tend to date. Uh, and even classic films um, sometimes don't hold up. Uh, everything dates, but sometimes those... Uh, little things that, that date it can be an issue and sometimes they're not. So uh, I thought I'd give it another go, have another watch. It was interesting because I went back to watching it again. I tried to put myself back in the mindset of of what my expectations were for that movie way back in uh, 2011, I think was when it came out, which was essentially, it was one of those great surprises, Rise of Planet of the Apes, because... The Planet of the Apes franchise previous to that had pretty much been killed off by the terrible Tim Burton one that we'd done years before. And I remember hearing that they were remaking what was essentially the fourth one of the original Planet of the Apes movies, because there's like five original Planet of the Apes movies, I think. I think. And this was the fourth one they were remaking as sort of a reboot. I remember hearing about it and kind of being like, meh, well, I guess it could be okay. It didn't really feel like something that needed to be rebooted or, or remade. I just sort of thought, you know... It's that kind of franchise that's sort of had its time, maybe just let it go. But the director, Rupert Wyatt, was actually quite an interesting director. And as the film got close to release, I was a little bit more interested in it. I was like, well, it could be quite good. And I did, like, get all the other Apes movies and watch them all. So I'm a fan of the franchise. I'm a fan of those movies. So I thought I'd give it a go, just to see, you know, why not? It looks like it could be quite good. And I remember being very, very pleasantly surprised um, by just how good it was and how the fact that it wasn't really a big action blockbuster movie, it was, for the most part, just sort of like a character drama. Uh, very much about James Franco's character trying to find his cure uh, for his dad who had Alzheimer's, which was John Lithgow. And it was a very human uh, movie, and I remember being blown away by just how intimate it was and how good it was. And at the time when I finished watching it, it was pleasantly surprised. I came out thinking, wow, that was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And it's... Uh, Somewhat, sometimes it's good to have these sort of low or middling expectations and then be very surprised. Uh, I remember thinking that, you know, at the time the motion capture work was really, really good as well. Andy Serkis was playing Caesar and did a really, really good job. Now, I will say that one of the aspects that's not so good about the movie is that the CG has dated considerably. Like, some of the shots it's fine, but there is a lot of shots, particularly towards the end of the movie, where it's just too fluid and it's very CGI and you can tell that it's not there. And it does drop you out of the movie a little bit. But I'd say the first half of the movie is very, very, very strong. Weirdly enough, towards the end when it sort of becomes more like an action type thing, it sort of loses a little bit of interest in me. It wasn't really quite so well done. Again, it's another one of these movies where you can tell the director isn't really an action director. He's very, very good at setting up Caesar, though. Very good at sort of the setup of the movie, which is, uh, you know, essentially Caesar starts off as this in fact, it isn't even about Steve, it's about his mum. Uh, and then it goes on to be about him. So really what you're seeing with this trilogy is, looking back in hindsight, this is you know the trilogy of a whole character's life, right from his very birth all the way up to, potentially, depending on what happens in the next one, his, his death. So it's interesting in that time to sort of look back and see how he is as a younger ape, as he's very, you know, he starts off being very quizzical about the world, being very interested and it becomes obvious that he's really super intelligent, and then there's a point where his intelligence is starting to become a problem, and this is the big issue with the film, is like, is it fair or is it right that he has this intelligence? To what extent can he be considered dangerous? To what extent can he be considered just uh, someone who has rights? And this was very heavily sort of animal rights influenced, I think, this movie. There's a lot about, you know, the poor treatment of animals and, and apes and stuff, and I fucking love apes. I love apes and monkeys anyway. And it was good that as the film went on, it starts off being about Humes and James Franco, but then at the end it has a sort of a twist where it's more, you realise really the stars of it are the apes, and it's actually the apes that are the good guys, and the humans are kind of 
the bad guys, and that was a good twist that sort of comes into the movie that you don't see coming. Um, so I really, really like that aspect of it. Um, like I say, the first half is very, very strong where it's a character drama uh, between James Franco and, uh, and Caesar, and as he sort of gets through the film, see how Caesar develops, because he starts off really liking James Franco to the point where he wants his own independence and he wants to sort of be seen as his own character and becomes more more au fait with the apes and the apes' way of doing things. And, and the ending is obviously quite a sad, bittersweet ending. So it does have a really good character journey for him in just this one movie. Uh, the only other downside of it was uh, some of the human stuff is a bit boring, uh, particularly the love interest. Frida Pinto is sort of a love interest to James Cam James Cam James Franco's character, and she's kind of forgettable. I mean, she's beautiful, but she doesn't really do very much. There's a certain scene in the movie where she's sort of trying to sort of, you know, show the other side, trying to kind of say like, look, you've you shouldn't really have experimented on him. This experiment's kind of gone wrong. You need to be careful what you do. You don't want to be playing God. This this kind of aspect critical aspects of what he's done, even though he feels like he's done it for the right reasons, does come into the movie, but then it, it soon sort of goes, and that's really as far as the character really gets with that argument. Towards the end, she just blends into the background, so I really don't know what the point of the character was in the movie. So I'd say that's a bit of a knock against it. And, um, yeah, and like I say, just the action-y type bits towards the end is just not that greatly done. It, it's, it's quite good, but I suppose it's difficult to... Uh, you know, uh, given what happens with Dawn and how much better that film is and how much better the action is, I'm probably being a bit too harsh on it because it up the stakes so much that when I look back at this, it do the action doesn't really do it for me anymore. But at the time, it was it was it was great because you know the last Planet of the Apes movie had been god awful throughout, so this was a good Planet of the Apes movie and that's something to be celebrated. So overall, I'd give this an eight out of ten. I'd say it's a good movie still. It still stands up for the character drama, for the aspect of seeing how Caesar starts off his journey. And the CG is for the most part good, but there are bits where you will be able to tell it's not real. And like I say, that end action scenes just doesn't really stand up to probably what comes in Dawn, and I'm assuming what's going to be even better in War. So overall, it's a good start to trilogy, solid 8 out of 10. I think it's worth checking out at this point just to sort of, again, ha have this whole aspect of understanding where his character goes and the arc his character is going to go on over into the next movie. So that's my review for this. I'm going to do another one for Dawn of Planet of the Apes, hopefully, before I see uh, War. And then, you know, Dawn is... I'm really looking forward to seeing that one because it was really, really an amazing movie and I really like it a lot more than this one. But this was still a good, decent movie and still probably an 8 out of 10 watch, which is probably what I would have given it at the time as well. So, yeah, it's worth checking out even now. So that's it for this review and I'll see you guys soon for a review very soon. Bye.